NJ Transit has six months to begin improving Access Link, its service for people with disabilities, as part of a settlement with the federal government. Advocates and riders say major changes are needed. I'm joined now by Karen Yee, a reporter at The Gothamist, who's been looking into problems with Access Link. Karen, good to see you. Good to see you. Karen, you've spoken with riders who rely on the service. They have had to wait a long time for service to arrive. Tell me a story about how long some of these waits are and how disruptive it is for people's lives. That's right. I spent the summer with a longtime rider. He's been riding the service for 15 years because of his brain injury, so he can't drive. And he was commuting to work, as we all do, right? And it's a five-mile trip, which should normally take about 14, 15 minutes, even with traffic, maybe 20 minutes. And one of those times, it took us more than an hour because the way that Access Link works, it's kind of like Uber Pool, where it picks up different passengers and then the software sets a route. But because these drivers, there's not enough drivers, they're picking up so many passengers and it's just adding more time to the trip um, to the route time so there was one time that the driver also got lost because they're using these old gps systems and we were literally pulled over on the on the side of route 23 twice which isn't really safe and there were other times where passengers in the car had to clearly say this isn't my drop-off point it's a little bit further further down and so when you have this this antiquated software when you have a lack of drivers and you have a vulnerable population, it's just sort of a recipe for disaster here. So this is a tough fix, though, in terms of lack of drivers. What can NJ Transit do about that? Because we know other companies are facing that issue, too. That's right. There's a national shortage of drivers, and that is what NJ Transit said. They're sort of up against these broader trends. Um, they did say that um, they're They've increased wages. So NJ Transit, while they handle all of the in-house uh, customer service and sort of software and planning, they do outsource the drivers to two companies. So I reached out to those two companies to get a better sense of how they're trying to ramp up hiring efforts, and they didn't call me back. Um, but that is something that if, if NJ Transit is going to meet the terms of this settlement with the U.S. Attorney's Office, they're definitely going to have to invest in getting more drivers to sort of relieve the existing staff and be able to make these routes and these drives a lot shorter for, for the residents that take them. What have you heard from NJ Transit in terms of how quickly any of these changes can happen and how committed they are to really serving the riders who use Access Link? Well, I mean, I, Access Link has been around since the 1990s and so have complaints about Access Link. I think what is new is there was a complaint that made it to the federal level and now there is the settlement that, act, that NJ Transit has to abide by. So there's different benchmarks. The first benchmark is six months in. Some of the changes that you mentioned, shorter trips, uh, not missed, uh, no missed trips or a very small percentage of missed trips. And then there's benchmarks further out, one year and then 24 months. NJ Transit if they don't abide by the settlement, you know, the U.S. Attorney's Office can file a civil suit to force them to comply. Um, you know, they said they're working on it. But again, you can't really make these fixes without bigger investments in sort of the infrastructure and how this system works. And so I think it'll be interesting to see how they strive to meet these benchmarks without making a significant investment in the number of drivers or in the GPS software that they're using that again is making these routes a lot longer because people are getting lost. The one thing that NJ Transit did say, which is interesting when I talked about lost drivers, they said they only get three complaints out of the 100,000 or so rides that they do, three complaints of drivers getting lost. But you know that's a limited data set because it's who, who, who which, which, driver, which riders are actually complaining to Access Link and what that data reflects. And in the meantime, riders just have to put up with it. There's very few options. That's right. I mean, Access uh, New Jersey Transit is expanding its accessibility across its fixed rail and bus routes. Um, and I think one of some of the advocates were saying we can't put all the pressure on Access Link. There always will be a need for a paratransit service, but I think that we need to find ways to relieve some of that pressure, maybe partnering with Uber or Lyft and getting reimbursements that way, making sure that residents know hey, there's a train station right by your house that is actually accessible and maybe it'll get you faster between New Brunswick and Newark rather than calling Access Link. So I think it, it needs a more holistic approach in order to make sure that residents with disabilities can also get around and not just to work, right, but to social events, to family events, dates, you know, they, they need to be able to fully participate and transportation is a huge barrier for them. Karen, thank you so much for your reporting on this and thanks for speaking with me today. Thank you.